Hello everyone. So this is part three of uh, the lecture demand and supply. So we are going to talk about the equilibrium equilibrium analysis in this uh, part. So in the first part, we talked about the demand curve. In part two, we talked about the supply curve. In part uh, part three, we are going to talk about the equilibrium where demand and supply meets. So here we have the graph. On the x-axis, we have the quantity of ice cream. On the y-axis, we have price of ice cream cones. Here we have uh, prices which range from 0 0.5 to $3. And the quantity ranges from 0 to 12. All right. So let's draw the demand curve. This is the demand curve and this is the supply curve. Uh, so these are straight lines. Supply curve goes in uh, the positive positive direction. There is positive gradient or slope. This is the negative slope of the demand curve. It goes downward. So there is a negative relationship between price and quantity demand uh, quantity in demand curve, and there is a positive relationship between price and quantity in supply curve. So you see. There is this point where demand and supply meets. This point is called equilibrium. When these two, uh, two lines, the uh, line of demand and the line of supply, where they cross each other, that's the point of equilibrium. And here we have the equilibrium at price 2 and quantity 7. This simply means that uh, in the market, the supplier will supply seven quantities of ice cream at price two this is called the market equilibrium so for that individual supplier this is the equilibrium this is where he will uh, this is how much ice creams seven ice creams he will sell and the price that he will charge is two now we will just see an example the example would make a lot of concepts clear so here we have the demand and supply and First of all, uh, this is about how an increase in demand affects the equilibrium. So uh, the demand of ice cream increases. How will it impact the equilibrium? This is the supply curve. This is the demand curve of ice cream. This is the quantity 7 at equilibrium and this is the price 2 at equilibrium. On x-axis we have the quantity of ice cream cones. On the y-axis we have price of ice cream cones. So now we are going to see how an increase in demand affects the equilibrium. This is the initial equilibrium. So an increase in demand means that the demand curve will shift to the right side. So hot weather increases the, increases the demand for ice cream. The demand curve will shift from D1 to D2. This is just D1 is demand 1, D2 is demand 2. So now we have a new demand curve and the supply curve has not changed. And the equilibrium has changed from the initial equilibrium to the new equilibrium. So here we have the new equilibrium. The demand curve has moved from D1 to D2 because the demand for ice cream has increased. And this will lead to a shift towards the right. So we, uh, we always get a shift when the variable uh, that has changed is not present on the graph. And here the variable that has changed is hot weather. The weather is hot so the demand for ice cream has increased. So whenever weather changes and the demand for ice cream increases it will lead to a shift of the demand curve towards right. So the demand curve moved towards right so we get a new equilibrium. So at the new equilibrium we have a higher price of $2.5 and a higher quantity sold of 10. Here, 10 quantity and 2.5 price level. This is the new equilibrium level. Uh, let's see another example. How a decrease in supply affects the equilibrium. So this is the initial supply. This is the initial demand. 
on x-axis we have the quantity of ice cream on y-axis we have price of ice cream cones the initial equilibrium is here and the price level at initial equilibrium is 2 the quantity sold is 7 uh, this is the same as it was before but now instead of changing the demand curve we are going to shift the supply curve so an earthquake reduces the supply of ice cream just assume that there is an earthquake which leads to a decrease in the supply of raw material needed to produce ice cream so what will happen whenever there is a shortage of uh, whenever the supply decreases what will happen will the supply curve uh, move towards here or towards this side just think think about it for a second so all right so i'm going to tell you the supply curve will shift towards the left not here but towards the left because the supply is decreasing so whenever supply curve supply decreases it shifts towards the left whenever it increases it shifts towards the right so in this case we have a new equilibrium this is the new equilibrium we will <clears throat> we are going to have a new price level here and the new quantity the quantity is of course 4 and the new price level is 2.5 all right so there was an earthquake the supply of ice cream decreased to see how supply of ice cream decreased we shift the supply curve towards the left side and then we had a new equilibrium level and that equilibrium level which is the new equilibrium this one has the price level at 2.5 the price increased from dollar to dollar 2.5 and the quantity decreased from dollars uh, from 7 to 4 all right so this is the new equilibrium so remember guys whenever the demand shifts towards the right it, it means that the demand has increased whenever the demand curve shifts towards the left it means left means downward in on this side it means that the demand has decreased and whenever the supply curve shifts towards the right on this side it means the supply has increased and whenever the supply curve shifts towards the left on this side it means supply has decreased it is important it is very uh, this is a very simple rule once you start practicing about uh, the shifts in demand and supply it will be much more easier i will also discuss different examples with you many more examples with you in uh, the fourth part of this lecture so uh, these there are just three steps to analyze the changes in equilibrium so we have the equilibrium so uh, whenever there is a change in demand or supply we will have a new equilibrium and this is just an analysis of uh, of that process so these are the three steps the first one says decide whether the event shifts the supply or demand curve or both so first when you read the statement that whether uh, there is an increase in in the demand for ice cream or whether there is an earthquake and the supply has decreased you have to decide whether the demand curve will shift or the supply curve will shift or whether both uh, curves will shift once you decide it, it will be easier for you to uh, to go to the next step the second step says decide whether the curves shifts to the left or to the right all right so once you know which curve is going to shift you have to decide whether the that curve has to shift towards the right or towards the left once you decide that you shift the curve and once you have shift, shifted the curve now you will have a new equilibrium with a new price and quantity then you just have to see uh, what the new equilibrium price level and the quantity is so it's simple so here we have the graph we have the demand and supply so first you have to see whether demand or supply shifts so let's assume the demand curve shifts so i choose demand curve i mean the question would tell me which curve to shift so the uh, so i'm assuming that the demand curve is going to shift and then i have to decide whether the demand curve will shift towards the right or towards the left let's decrease the demand decreasing the demand will shift the demand curves towards the left so this is demand two all right so the demand curve has moved towards left now there is a new equilibrium the first equilibrium was this one 
the new equilibrium is this one all right so that's it that is mainly the demand and supply concepts that you need to understand these are the basic concepts and part of microeconomics 101 uh, so we are not going to move to advanced demand and supply concepts here uh, that's part of the next chapter that is elasticities we are going to talk about elasticities in the next lecture but for this chapter we are going to close here in the next part of this lecture uh, I'm going to upload some examples and we will be doing those examples in detail and those examples will hopefully help you to understand the concepts of demand and supply very clearly alright so uh, I'll see you guys in the fourth part of this demand and supply lecture